Welcome back to Force Education, this is Zent. Today we're going to be talking about Highland Holdings Corporations, previously known as SHLL, before acquisition with uh, Highland Group. So I'm going to go through technical analysis, mainly news on this one and why I am bullish on this one. Uh, I'm going to go through everything I can find on this company here. Now today I'm using TradingView, which is an online website. Uh, you can Google it in and you find it. Uh, I'm only using the free sources just to show you that you can actually do all these kind of things uh, for free without needing, for instance, a broker that I use or a platform that I use. And this is just to prove that the actual chart information is out there and technical indicators merely just make them clearer to see. So let's just, just jump right into it. What we get to see here, this is the uh, one day interval. And what we get to see here is that the 10 SMA is above the 30 EMA. And that's the green line in this with the CN line. But what we get to see is that the other EMAs, such as the 100 SMA and the 200 SMA, are way below. Even though the 50 SMA is above the 200 SMA, they all look bullish, but it slipped a little bit below the trading action zone. Now, this level here is set to be uh, not fully overbought or oversold. It's more sitting in neutral, but previously where it was at this level around here, it did see a jump. Now, two things that I can see. I can see a double bottom, one here and one here. And then I can see a multiple bottom being hit right now. One, two, three. So the expectation is this is an actual very strong support that it was on the $40 mark. And it can actually see a bounce right here. Now the other support would be down to 36.80. Now let's jump right into, let's say, Fibonacci retracements to try to identify, uh, well, where is your next distance? Or even support as well. So what we're looking at here, and I'm moving just a tad to around over here we're looking at it's still sitting in the current uh resist sorry support at 39.22 as i did mention that is as well uh, looking like a very strong support below that 33.76 above that in terms of resistance is 47 and above that 56.91 now if we were to look into significant supports and resistances uh what we get to see here is that of course we're looking at the 39.99 or almost a 40 dollar mark uh, that is that is a significant one and then we're looking as well um, when We go above that in terms of resistance 43.18 right on here and then above that we're looking 46.78 seems to be a mini there and then we're looking at a big resistance at 50.38 and then above that that's the one that has been denied a few times 53.16 now if we're looking at supports we're looking down to 37.02 and then we're looking at 27.25 and then below that 24.26 and down to 1948. Now, why am I bullish on this one? Um, let's just first go through the latest news and then I'm going to go through the presentation and share my views on it. Now, first things first, just to try to identify, this is a chart found on Barron's website. It looks quite amazing. It basically comp compares Tortoise Acquisition, which is now Highland with Diamond Peak, Nikola, Kingston Capital, Spartan, and Hennessy Capital. Now, they all are different, but you get to see that Tortoise one is actually trading at the highest level compared to all of them. Now, N Nikhil, I believe somewhere around this range here, did get their Hinderberg research and that kind of dipped them down all the way down to, uh, I believe they're trading at $27 right now. So, taking a quick look as well into the latest news here, you get to see this was more for the vote for uh, the combination for the two companies. Nothing significant seems to be released ever since, and the stock did take a dive um, after it was actually completed. Now, one thing to kind of keep in mind is that uh, the previously known SHLL had an un, um, unusual volume when it comes in towards the options for, for calls. Um, the main strike was around 55 um, and its expiration for around 16th. So you can expect that market manipulators will try to hit that mark uh, around the 55 mark just to make sure that their calls print. If you would like to go to their website, Tortoise Acquisition II and Core I are listed on their website and you can find in different things like filings, audits, and information. And from there, when you go to view filings, you'll get to the sec.gov website, which is very accurate, but nothing is new here other than mainly the acquisitions uh, itself. So now going on towards uh, exciting stuff, their website, just to give a, a little bit of an insight. Now I'm going to go straight to their presentation as it holds in almost everything I need to talk about. This is a little bit of an outdated presentation, but all the information in it still looks quite uh, all right and still updated. 
So let's take a quick look. Um, we're looking at basically 520 million of cash fund growth uh, based on cash held in trust for 325 million in buy proceeds. So we're talking, I believe, the last updated price point was around 530 million in cash uh, to get it towards where it needs to be. 1.1 billion enterprise value with no material debt outstanding. And we're talking back in June. So that already has increased quite a little uh, 96 of the countries are committed to parents agreement and so they are uh, when you commit it to Paris agreement you're more off binded towards uh, a set of climate change rules or carbon dioxide emissions and Highland has three different parts of uh, in terms of their trucks I'm gonna go through it right in a second but before doing so we're going to be looking into their hybrid electric here and so basically uh they have early deployment fleet with around thirty thousand trucks for their hybrid electrics uh and their erx ones that's customer and trials for 2021 with the launch partner bidding of pre-order of 1000 we do have their uh their partner for the pre-orders i'll mention it in a little bit but we get to see here that hybrid electrics and hyper trucks erx as well how they compare to things like or well the available today is basically diesel versus hybrid electric um, and you get to see that it's actually sitting down uh, at cheaper than diesel upfront cost is a little bit higher but when you look at the seven seven year fuel uh, costs it actually looks quite better uh, we're looking at revenue loss versus gained uh, it still looks quite better so around six percent saving if you're looking at a seven year out of price point now if we're looking into the hyper trucks erx in terms of the front up costs we're looking at 220,000 compared it's a little bit more expensive than tesla one although it works on erx uh, instead of bev i'm going to explain the difference in a little now nikula one we're not even sure if that's going to come out anytime soon for fcev but that's all the way back to 2023 so i'm not going to actually uh, address that one here but you get to see in terms of the actual uh, seven year total payload revenue lost. We're looking at an additional of 35,000 for the hyper truck minus 140,000 additional for the battery electric. So we're looking at a difference here of 175,000. So it looks in their estimation is around 35%. Now, if we were looking into uh, different costs here, we're getting to look in hydrogen electric and R slash CNG or known as RNG. The fuel carbon intensity score is quite it's negative it's, it's actually really good now what is rng uh so rng it's, it's quite an interesting technology here uh but cng slash rng are more of biofuels and they're it stands for renewable natural gas production um and if you've ever seen my videos about companies like givo you'll be able to understand a little bit more about what natural gas production is now in other comparison here we get to see something regarding FCEV and BEV, right? And what are they? And they got the ERX. Now, the FCEV is the hydrogen fuel cell. Now, the BEV is a battery electrical vehicle. And ERX is electric range extender. And so, basically, this is kind of the technology that adds in, even like when we added in with RNGs, which are renewable natural gases. What it does, it actually extends, uh, or I'm going to just read here, by utilizing a renewable natural RNG fueled onboard electrical generators, the ERX trade marketed powertrain operates as a self charging fully electric system without the limitation of alternate battery only solutions relying solely on grid power. And so, this gives it a really good solution when it comes in towards uh, other than hybrid electrics, the ERX is where it actually is an electrical one combined with, for instance, something like an RNG. So, it's more of a hybrid, for instance. Uh, which is a first step towards that electrical one and now the big thing comes in where uh, well what about the infrastructure in terms of having different miles on the payload as well when it comes in towards uh, the electric grid so this company here has a solution to that now we're looking at 729 stations uh, when it comes in towards for RC slash CNG compared to around less than 10 electricity and less than 10 hydrogen in North America and so it cuts on the costs, for instance, when in terms of comes to hydrogen, you're looking at $12 billion to establish the same number of R slash CNG stations and around $7 billion for electricity. So that's a long way to go, especially with Tesla needing to reach there by 2021. Uh, the ERX is ready to be launched in 2021 because it looks like the infrastructure is ready. Now, in the hybrid electric one, it's actually available right now. 
so that is amazing news there in terms of the range we're looking at 1300 now that's almost three times as much as tesla's uh, when it comes into refuel or charge time it's almost one third in tesla payload capacity you're looking at uh something like 20 percent 25 almost 25 percent additional that of teslas and that is a that is uh an enormous difference when it comes in towards payload capacities performance from zero to 60 it matches teslas we're not sure about nuclear one uh unless we're talking about downhill movements uh but when it comes into <laughs> agility uh they are they have already pre-ordered around 1000 hyper trucks erx and that's the one launching in 2021 and so you get to see that there is potential for this one as well in terms of different providers now the amazing one about this one here is that it has strategic partners and it's not really uh, limiting itself that they want to do everything even though they have a battery a provider i'm going to go through it in a second uh, but basically in terms of engineering install partners refueling and hydrogen fuel cells and data analysis and electrical components they do have manufacturers there to help them reach it um, and for instance ang owns and builds sorry owns and operates r slash cng fueling stations across the u.s with 100 percent rng fuel option and so that is amazing when it comes in towards uh relying into uh others as well to make sure that not the entire uh basket is put into highland now fcv r slash cng and hybrid electric Island will have all these options and FCV is the fuel cell electrical vehicle and that has something to do with as well uh, the hydrogen cells compared to the battery electrical vehicle and so the FCV are supposed to give uh, a lot more range than the BEV and be more reliable. Now Tesla is yet to come up with uh, statistics for that in terms of an actual product and so Highland does have the hybrid and so it has still one product compared to the rest. $800 billion replacement of market opportunities with target different target customers. Now, one of the things that I really am excited about is that they have an in-house battery uh, acqui acqu uh, acquisition already made for the BMS solutions for over a decade for battery management systems. Now, their battery cells are provided by Toshiba. Uh, and so that kind of looks exciting where they already have a lot of that infrastructure. Now, I'm not going to go through every single thing, but previously CNGs have been mouth bad mouth regarding them being underpowered but uh with the technology that they're working with uh with the rngs and the electrical hybrid cng solution uh you're coming in with an increased payload so that is amazing as well there uh, and it can actually drive up to 120 horsepower by adding additional horsepower and torque uh over the base truck so that is amazing when it comes into that i'm not going to go through so much of it because uh the presentation can take quite a bit to go through now when we're talking about 2020 what is some things we're expecting testing and validation that has already started production design and development already started the next massive prs commercialization and launch activities that's starting in quarter one 2021 and a fleet demo rollout will be in 2021 quarter two uh, so that's amazing news as well when it comes in towards long investments so this is one of the amazing ones that i'm looking at for long investments um yeah, so I don't think there's much to go through other than this, other unless I'm going to be repeating myself here and try not to do that. It's already as long of a video. So what do you think about the sticker? Make sure you mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like. You have a wonderful day.